Hey, welcome back to Black Lab Garage. Well, as you can see, I'm uh, in the back 40 here. The reason being, well, we're gonna do something different today. We're gonna work on a go-kart. Actually, this go-kart was one of the things that was in my red ton truck when it got squashed by the tree. Because if you've seen that video, you can see it sitting back there. But I know a boy whose birthday's coming up. And, well, every boy should have a go-kart, shouldn't they? I mean, I had one. I mean, that's just, that's a necessity of life is a go-kart. So, uh, this one, you can see it's, the exhaust ain't been covered. Motor's stuck. It's going to make throttle cable. Need to paint it. Chains seized up. So, we got our work cut out for it. But, not only do we got to do this one, we got another one we got to do. And I've only got a few days to get it done. So, you ready? Come on, let's get into it. First thing we gotta do is get to the house. I'm in the backyard here. My back, it's like two and a half acres. I'm not pushing this thing two and a half acres. For one thing, like I said, the chain's locked up on it. I mean, it'll roll, but barely. So, I tie strapped it to the lawnmower, and we're going to drag it. Working so far. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get this old junky engine off here so we can get it up on the stand. Don't look like there's only two bolts holding it on, so it should be fairly easy. Well, first thing we need to do is, well, take the steering wheel off of it, take the seat off of it, take the wheels off of it. I'll probably drop the whole rear axle out, just to be honest. But get it blowed apart so we can sand it and get it painted. pad so it'll conform to the curves a little better and let's start sanding Hopefully you can hear me. I got a respirator on. I want to spray some uh, good old epoxy on this thing and I'll check back in with you here in a few minutes. All right I got the paint mixed up. I'm using uh, this is actually just acrylic enamel I got mixed at my local jobber. 
I actually, the boys at this go-kart's going to, I let him pick the color out that he wanted. And you know what? He had pretty good taste. That's a pretty color. So let's shoot some paint on this thing. talk about sprockets for a minute this is the sprocket that came on that cart I mean a normal yard cart's going to have like a 62 sprocket on it this thing has 30 it would have absolutely no takeoff whatsoever now on the bright side it would run like 30 40 mile an hour if you had a place you know long enough to run it but I, I mean he's, he's nine you know I, I'm not trying to get him killed here so I've got a 62 sprocket and a 72 because this cart has such uh, tall tires on it. I want to go with the 72 for now. That way he'll have good takeoff. And, you know, should the time come that I need to speed it up, I can always swap this out for the uh, 62. Right now i got a spot welded onto the axle shaft. All right, I got some of this Duplicolor. This is a uh, cast coat aluminum. We'll dust on these rims you know and give him some 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 fake looking mags take a while for this to dry. It's kind of cold out here today. It's like 84 the day before yesterday and it's like 55 right now. off all right even though these didn't originally come with a collar on the outside because they this one just had collars on the inside i'm putting one on the outside also now that i've got the uh, axle centered up where i want it On this collar, this is actually an eccentric style collar. So you won't go on. You actually have to turn it because it's it's an offset cut. So you turn it until it drops on there. Now that we've turned it as far as we can, take a punch and put it in the hole. Not not the one where the Allen screw is, but the other one. There will be a hole that's not drilled all the way through and hit it. 
basically that'll lock it on to that collar. Then you tighten the set screw down. So now the axle's locked in there. It can't slide to either side. Now let's find our keyway. There it is. Had to get new hubs. I actually had to take a hydraulic press to one of the old hubs to get it off and the other one I actually had to cut off. Line up the keyway best that we can. Take our new key. Still needs to turn just a hair. punch drive it on up in there now we can put the wheel on I'll put the axle nut on last let's see here doesn't that new hardware just make it look a whole lot better It's a whole lot better than putting that old rusty hardware back on it. And I can't get this nut started, so I won't be like to be here in my dying days. I mean, I'll just find an old skeleton standing out here beside a go-kart trying to put a nut on a wheel. Now that's to be safe, even though this has a nylock nut on it. I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on it. All right, let's talk engines for a minute. I've got most of the cart back together now. Um, I had a Predator engine on a fully built tiller here that had replaced a Briggs and Stratton that blew up. This thing's been run just a couple times. It's about a year old, I guess. But uh, I found a Tecumseh engine. I like Tecumseh engines. A lot of people don't. I like them. So I took this off my tiller. I'm going to put the Tecumseh on my tiller and put this on the go-kart. Because it'll make a better go-kart motor than the Tecumseh. So, now let's put the clutch on it. See, it looks like to get this one to line up, I put it on backwards. Well, I call it backwards. Alright, now let's lock this key into it real fast. Really and truthfully, it needs a new key. I went to get one. It already closed, so. 
like everything else, you make do with what you got. Five. Sanded it down. I went ahead and laid the chain up there just across the two sprockets so you can see it's lined up pretty good. So let's take a connecting link. Put that together, then put the plate on it. Now this clip. You'd be surprised how many people get this backwards. You always put the rounded part of it facing the direction it's going to turn because that makes it harder for it to come undone a lot of people get that backwards though i'll get a pair of needle nose pliers tighten the engine down. Alright, as you can see, we're in the truck here. I've got the go-kart loaded up. We're fixing to go deliver this thing. Boy has no idea that I'm coming or that I have the go-kart. As far as I know, he has no idea that he's even getting my go-kart. So, I want to try to get his reaction. Hopefully, he don't see it before I can jump out and start recording. So, we'll see what happens. You ready? Come on. I didn't say it was yours. Uh, what are you doing? I didn't say it was yours. Yeah, I, my bike. I sold that to some boy down the road. I didn't say it was yours. Okay. Alright, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, is it okay that's what makes it worth it. Do what? Is that thing got gas in or I'm gonna have to I even filled it up with gas. Okay, thank you. Well I did say this was a tail of two go-karts, didn't I? This one here is a Manco White Fox 2. This one will be a little bit simpler than that other one. And I did find out, I, was, I happened to see a picture of one identical that other one. And that other one is actually a uh, Yerf dog. I'm not exactly sure what model Yerf dog it is. Um, but I, I, know, I do know it was a Yerf dog built. So, now let's blow this one apart. Which it helps to put the right socket on. You know, I don't know what they painted this with, if that's powder, I mean, it feels like it's just a vinyl decal all over it. But I don't know, it's out here, I, I'm not sure. That's powder, it's definitely not just regular paint, but they had these on the clearance at Harbor Freight, these or the Harley Carbide abrasive wheels. I'm going to try one of them, see what it does to it.
Well, there's one coat down on it. I just want to show you, for those of you that rolled your eyes or you know, was scoffing at me using gas, you seen that oil on the stand here where the engine goes. Now, how many fish eyes do you see? So I said, voodoo, but it works. What I've run into, the seat on this Manco cart was horrible. Manco wants $100 for a replacement seat cover. Not the whole seat, just the seat cover. That, from what I looked up online anyway. And I'm not giving $100 for a seat cover. Sorry, but no. So I got a universal one that's the right width and everything. The only problem is it's not as tall as this one. So I'm going to take three inches out of this seat frame and shorten it up where the new cover will fit fine. So I'm going to try to do it with a cutoff wheel here. Warrior. Ultimate warrior wheels. I'll probably shake about as bad as he did running out to the ring. But anyway, um, these are on clearance at Harbor Freight right now for like $1.69 a pack. Not a disc, a pack. Put my foot on it. Fine, look at our bandsaw couldn't cut that straight. All right, got it welded back together and ground down. Got a little dust on it there, but I want to dust a little black paint on it. All right, let's get these wheels looking a little bit better. First thing I'm gonna do is let some air out of them, or well, all the air out of them. I was testing the uh, inner tubes, see if they were still good, and they are. I've left them aired up for a few days now. And they've held air, so. Now then, before somebody says it, yes, I know about the playing card trick. Yes, I know about the plastic bag trick. Well, number one, I'm not gonna waste a trash bag on these little wheels. Number two, I ain't been to the grocery store to get any small bags. I ain't been grocery shopping in a while. But number three, I got masking tape. So, anyway, after you let the air out so you can push the uh, tire down to get to the lip of the rim a lot easier. So I'll let the paint go in behind it. The wind's blowing the leaves out here. Hopefully you don't have a leaf land right in the middle of it. If we do, we do, I guess. I'm not fond of maple leaves anyway, you know. Well, maple trees, not just the leaves, the trees. dust these with some it's actually Ace Hardware brand uh, spray paint I forgot to mask up the ballast stem didn't I yeah we'll throw a little piece around it um, but the button and everything looks like rust oleum so I'm pretty sure rust oleum makes it works as good as rust oleum smells like rust oleum could be wrong I'm pretty sure it's rust oleum Now. 
around get the outer rim. And we'll let that coat dry and come back and put another one on it. Oops, missed the spot, didn't I? In the meantime, I'll try to keep the leaves out of it. All right, on the back, I'm gonna put new tires on it because this is actually the better one of the two, but they won't hold air. There's no inner tubes in them. The other side, the one that actually drives, it's bald. And yes, I've took the valve stem out of it. Or the core, I should say. And I'll be honest, I would rather mess with a full-size tire as I would a small tire. I may have to put it under the hitch of my truck and use a bottle jack like you see me do. Man, do I hate messing with little tires. There we go. You know, thank goodness for Harbor Freight and their big, cheap screwdrivers. Well, let's get this last tire mounted on here. First, I'm going to take some masking tape that I've ran across my pants leg so it don't stick too bad. I'm just going to run around the Leave with this tires we don't hopefully we don't tear it up too bad but even if we do we can touch it up it's no big deal but I'll try to prevent it if possible I went to Napa and got a bucket of tire lube. That's a little bit too much. Because it does make it easier. I have used dish soap and stuff before. I mean, it, it works, but not as good. Because dish soap tends to dry up fairly fast. And these, two, or these tires here are tubeless, so let's put a new valve stem in it. Pull it through. There we go. Now let's see. This is the outside. Okay. I like to make sure that the tread matches from side to side. Yeah, I'm just weird and picky like that. But hey, at least I admit it. Now let's put some groovy lube on this. Usually the first one ain't too bad.
touch that up. I ever mentioned I hate messing with small tires? I ain't kidding. Big tires are easier. Oh, if I wouldn't get demonetized, I'd say what I really think right now. I'll be back in about three hours. There we go. Hallelujah, sound the trumpets. Adam, go touch his rim up. All right, we gotta make a new seat base. It's 27 wide. cut this out now all right here's the seat bottom and I cut these pieces on the side and screwed onto it because the the seat cushion I got actually has two a flap on each side that comes up so I put these on there to help hold it up I just screwed it back down to the original frame with carriage bolts and then this is the original seat back that was on the other seat and I'm just reusing it all right, I had this old clutch here, you know, I burned another one up, but I had this one as extra. It sat around for a while, so we're going to clean it up. All I got to do is get you a pair of snap ring pliers, pull this big snap ring off, and then it'll slide right apart. I want to see there's some rust inside that drum where it sat around so long. I want to clean that up, and before you put it back together, make sure you uh, get you like some 30 weight engine oil and smear around on the inside of that bushing before you put it back together. Now there's two things that you want to do on these Predator motors when you first install one. Underneath this, see that nut right there? That's what holds tension on your throttle. And you want to back it off a little bit so the throttle can move freely. There we go. I got that. The other thing is See that Phillips screw right there? If I can get you in here. You want to back it off or take it out completely. And that'll get you some more RPMs. Yeah, it can't. But there's wide open. It can't touch it there, so we're good. You just have to check and see if you have to take it out completely or just back it off. That's why it opens. So we're good. And then right here on your low oil level shut off, unhook this yellow wire. Just unplug it. If you 
can. I'll have to use two hands here. <clears throat> there we go. Now what I do, and it's up to you, but I always um, wire the kill switch into this and still use that box because it's, I can't remember the name of that kind of switch, but basically you don't have to hold the switch down the whole time to kill it. If the switch just makes contact the ground once, that box keeps it shut off and it'll, it'll die and you just have to crank it back. So that works good if you have like a push button kill switch or something. I mean, you can just touch it and it'll kill the motor. You don't have to hold it down the whole time. All right, I got the chains on it. I cut the chain, you know, made the chain just like I did the other go karts you seen. But with this and having this jack shaft on it, it gets a little complicated. So what you have to do, if you want to tighten this chain, you loosen the bolts up on the engine, hold this in place where it is, but slide the engine forward. If you want to tighten this chain, you loosen the same bolts up and slide this piece back. You know, because both of them move independently of each other. So, a little complicated, but once you get it, it's fine. Because the reason I'm throwing that in there, because if this chain runs loose, it tends to want to ride up over top of the sprocket on the clutch instead of fitting down in the groove like it's supposed to. Now remember I said about using that wire on the uh, oil level box or the low oil box. I ran it to a, you can see it through the steering wheel, a push button switch up here. As you remember I said as long as you make a ground that box will kill the engine whether you hold the switch down or not. See, look. Works good. And now we're delivering this go kart. So let's see how it goes. Y'all see me on it? Say what? <laughs> My left one's hanging over the front bumper. Well, does that work for you? Does that work for you? Well, we got the two go-karts done. If you hear something, that's me. Well, I'll show you here in a second, but it's me with the dog. But anyway, we got those done. Um, unfortunately, I had video of her oldest boy driving the dark blue go-kart, and it just... That was my dog. Uh, the video vanished. Have no idea what happened to it. So uh, I apologize for that. But he was tickled to death. He really enjoyed it. Matter of fact, he's already broke the throttle cable on it. So I got to go put a throttle cable on it. But uh, I will get footage of him driving them. Okay. But I, I want to finish this video up. And I, I apologize. I don't know. I can't. It's, it's, the, the footage just disappeared. Like the Blair Witch Project or something. But anyway... Um, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Be sure hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, and as always, me and the pups, we really appreciate each and every one of you. So, take care. See you. You're spoiled, ain't you?